hey there. So I realized that Ruffer was having a sale, and I've had my Ruffer brushes for over a year now, um, so I thought I'd give my thoughts and compare them to the other brushes that I have. These are pretty good brushes for the price point, and they were my first few day. Um, and honestly, I probably wouldn't have purchased any of my Wayne Goss or Sonia G brushes if I hadn't first purchased Ruffer brushes, um, because the price point of few day brushes is pretty high, but Ruffer was where it started. So I thought I'd come here, give you my thoughts, and uh, let you know my specific brushes, what I have, what I like about them, what I don't. Um, maybe this will help you make a decision. All right, so I have everything set up here. I have my six refer brushes and then all of the different comparisons. So first of all, sorry for my voice, I'm just getting over a cold, so I'm gonna be a little bit nasally. Also, um, I use all of my brushes. I'm, you know, I don't really have time to go in and clean everything before filming. So yes, all of my brushes are quite dirty. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start off with um, really my only face brush. I do consider the 36 to be more of a face brush than an eyeshadow brush, but it is considered an eye brush in their line. So the 37 is my only face brush from Ruffer. It's a small round cheek brush. And I've really only used this for blush, I don't wear I don't wear bronzer, I don't wear contour, I don't really do anything else. Um so oh no. So I've done blush and I've also used this that I put on my bare minerals foundation. Um and it's fine for that. It doesn't hold a candle to Sonya G's face one, but I mean, what does? So overall this is a really nice soft brush. I like it. I think it has really nice flow to it. Um, and even though it has a nice flow to it, the overall brush is somewhat firm. So it does a really good job of blending things out. And actually, um, I honestly think that this would work a lot better for creams and maybe even liquids than it does for powders. And I essentially only use powder products. My only cream product is um, my Bobbi Brown under eye corrector. Um, everything else that I use is powder. So I think that if you are more of a cream or liquid makeup girly, you might actually like this brush quite a lot. Now, one thing I don't love about this brush is when I do have it on my face, um, it can be a little bit prickly here and there. Like, it's not too bad, um, but it's, it, it is noticeable. And it was really noticeable after I purchased um, the Wayne Goss 13 and the Sonya G Face 2. Wayne Goss, like this brush, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I mean, this this brush is soft, don't get me wrong. This brush is soft, especially if you are used to like a more prickly synthetic brush. Like if you've never had a brush that you put on your face and then you thought that it felt like putting like silk or a cloud on your face, this is gonna feel really nice. However, the Wayne Goss brush is a totally different level, just, just totally different. This literally feels like, like these are silk strands and I'm just grazing it across my hand. And the, the movement is more fluid. Um, there is a little bit less stiffness to the bristles, so I do think that this, um, for me, this works better for powder, but I do think that for cream, this might not be as good. Now, I've never used this for cream, so I'm I'm kind of assuming, um, but it doesn't have the same stiffness to the bristles, but it's still stiff enough, and I, you know what, now that I think about it, I think that this might actually be more dense. Yeah, it is. Oh, I didn't even notice that before. So while the rougher brush has more stiffness in the bristle, the stiffness is coming from the actual individual bristles. They're just, they're just more stiff. The Wayne Goss, on the other hand, the whole brush head feels less stiff, but 
it has a lot more hairs than that, I think. It's just it's just more dense. It just provides a very different experience. So overall, this is this is so much better. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> like I like my 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 rougher brush, but this is so much better. Now this brush isn't available anymore, and I, I feel a little bit bad comparing the rougher brush to both of these because neither one of these are available. And <laughs> So I said the Wayne Goss brush was on a different level from the rougher, and the Sonia G Phase 2 is on a different level from the Wayne Goss. Um, now this is a little bit of a different brush overall. Um, I don't think that this is as dense as the Wayne Goss brush. This is much more airy, which I'm going to like because I use powder products. Um, this has, the fluid motion of this is just unparalleled, and I'm so sorry my my camera keeps on refocusing to everything beneath. Maybe I should just keep everything down here. You know what? Let's zoom in. Maybe that'll make things a little bit better. All right. So this is silky smooth soft. And it's a little bit less dense than the Wayne Goss brush. So for me, using powder products, this is absolute perfection. Now this isn't my favorite brush shape. I actually prefer using a um, fan brush now for blush, but if I want this kind of a brush for blush or highlight, this is perfection. Now I will say, I don't think I would ever pick up this brush to put on powder foundation, whereas the Wayne Goss and the Ruffer brushes, I would consider trying to use these for powder foundation. I don't think that these are the best brushes to do it, but I think they could do it. I think I would have to be a little bit too rough on the Sony G Phase 2 in order to get the lay down that I want out of my powder foundation. That being said, I've never actually used it for powder foundation, so maybe it would surprise me. But frankly, I wouldn't want to use it for that purpose. I would prefer using these two stiffer brushes. So overall, in my opinion, I would go for the Sony G Phase 2 any day over all three of these brushes. Although now that I know my brush preference is a little bit better, I actually wouldn't get any of these. Um, I don't use these type of brushes very often. I find myself trying to make myself use them. Um, so I might not actually be the best reviewer for this kind of brush if you like this kind of brush. Um, I will say, in terms of, you know, should you get this brush or not? It's a fine brush and it's good for its price point. I forget how much it sells for, but I want to say I probably got this for like maybe $15, maybe less. I, I honestly forget, um, but it wasn't very much. And again, I like powder products and I use almost exclusively powder products. But if you're using mostly creams and liquids, this might actually serve you better than the Wayne Goss or the Sony G. And, and neither is the Wayne Goss or the Sony G is available. So there's that. So all of these are great brushes. None of these are brushes that I'll probably keep in my collection long term. All right, so going to the 36 brush. So the 36 brush has confused me because it was marketed as an eyeshadow brush. And I honestly have no idea how you'd use this as an eyeshadow brush. And maybe it's because I just have small hooded eyes. Um, but yeah, I feel like I would just smush my eye by trying to put eyeshadow on this one. Um, but I got this to use as a concealer brush. And I think, so I purchased this brush after I had the Sephora 71 brush for a while. And honestly, the 36 brush is everything that I wanted the 71 brush to be. Um, where the 71 brush is kind of thin and not very fluffy. I mean, it's, it's very stiff overall. This is a synthetic brush, by the way. Um, there's nothing soft about this. It is very firm. It doesn't really fluff out very much. Um, but it does have this, this sort of cat paw shape, but it's not as fluffed out as I would have liked it to be. And 
most importantly, these bristles, when they hit my skin, I find them to be incredibly stabby. It's just how sensitive my skin is. I don't think it's a bad brush by any means. I've, I've seen all of the Sephora Pro Collection brushes reviewed very well, and I think it's just not a good match for me. It performs pretty well, um, but I can't stand this on my face. So when I saw this from Ruffer, I picked it up, and I was like, ooh, maybe this will be the better version of the 71 brush, and it really was. It really was. And... Like, compared to the Sephora Pro 71 brush, this was like clouds on my under eyes, which is typically where I put concealer. And it just blended things in so nicely, and it just, and it didn't stab my under eyes. Like, it, it can be a little bit prickly, but it's nothing, absolutely nothing compared to the Sephora Pro 71 brush. This was just absolute luxury by comparison. Now, at the same time, I never loved using this brush. Part of it was because I really had to wash it almost every time, um, which you really should be doing with concealer, but I'm lazy. And the problem with this brush, and I think this is true for goat hair brushes in general, or at least in my experience, um, if you leave concealer or any cream in it and you don't wash it between uses it clumps up and that will affect the finish if you use it again basically your concealer will start looking clumpy because your brush is clumpy and I mean that makes sense right it makes a lot of sense but here's the thing natural hair brushes you're not supposed to wash that often and I don't wear makeup every day. I probably just do it like twice a week or so. But you're not supposed to wash your natural hair brushes twice a week. I mean, you can, you can, but you're going to reduce the lifespan of the brush significantly. Um, so that never really sat well with me using this as a concealer brush because I'm basically reducing the life of it. Um, but I mean, I would still use it and I would still clean it and it was, it was fine. That's just a drawback that maybe you should be aware of. But something else I noticed was this brush was just too big for me. Like, don't get me wrong. It is a better version of the 71 brush, but they're both too big. They're too wide. I needed something a little bit more, not thin, but just more narrow to fit in where I want my concealer to go. And these two just weren't, they weren't fitting the bill. I could, I could figure out how to use these, but I didn't enjoy using them. So um, I went and picked up some Sonia G brushes because Sonia G usually does her brushes really amazingly well. And I think overall, I actually do prefer the, um, the bristle in this one a lot better than either the Sephora Pro or the Ruffer 36. Um, this is this is very, it's like the best combination of being incredibly soft while also having this stiffness that doesn't, like it doesn't make the brush any less soft. Like this is actually kind of a really stiff brush and it's still so incredibly soft. It feels like, it feels like you're, rubbing a pillow against your face, but it's still so stiff that you can have great placement of the concealer. Like, this is just an amazingly made brush. Um, this is her Jumbo Concealer, by the way. I also have her um, Soft Concealer in both of these, and I can't say enough good things about them. They're beautiful. The finish that I get with this is probably a lot better than the rougher brush that I use. Um, and I find that this is easier to clean, like not full clean, but just like rubbing it off on a microfiber uh, towel. This gets cleaner more easily. I have no idea why, um, but I find the rougher brush is actually really, really difficult to clean off on a microfiber brush. That doesn't really work. I have to actually clean this with soap and water in order for it to get clean. Um, the Sonia G Fusion brushes, uh, not so much. These are much easier to clean. 
These are just better in every way, except maybe the most important way, which is the shape. I don't like the shape of either one of these. Neither one of these is any, well, I guess the soft concealer is more narrow technically, and the jumbo concealer is more narrow one way, but they still don't allow me to get into like the corner of my under eye that I want to, which is so infuriating because I really like the finish that these get. I really love how these work, but the shape is just all wrong for me. Um, and I did consider getting her, man, I forget what it's called, but it's like a, it's, it looks like a pencil brush, but it's in the same line. Maybe it's like the detail brush or something. I debated getting that for my under eye concealer, but it was, it'd be like using a pencil brush for my concealer. And that isn't really what I wanted either. I wanted to have, I really, what I really wanted was I wanted a refer brush like this that was half the width. I would have been cool with that. I would have been exceptionally ecstatic if Sonia G had come out with something like that, but I actually noticed that Pat McGrath came out with something like this. Now this is synthetic and this is clearly heavily used, so I'm, I'm so sorry. This is like, I would have to wash this before using it. Um, but this is actually exactly the kind of brush that I wanted. It's very similar to the rougher brush, except it also has a little bit more of, um, like the ferrule comes up in the back and gives it a little bit more support, which I actually prefer. But it's, um, it's narrow the way that I want it to. And let me tell you, this performs beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Um, I find that even though it's synthetic, it gives me the same sort of finish that I would get out of the rougher. Maybe not quite what I get out of the Sony G, um, but it's still really good and it's incredibly soft. Um, the rougher will prickle me sometimes, this never has. All right, so on to the 33 brush. So just so you're aware, um, the 33 and 16 brushes I got on a, um, a promotion where you got the brushes for free and you just paid shipping. The other four brushes I've had for a year. These two brushes I think I've had for a few months. So I have had a different level of experience with them. Um, and the 33 brush is one that I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to use. And I think it's just a shape that I just don't find particularly useful. Um, it doesn't mean it's a bad brush. It's just not the kind of brush that I reach for. Um, now I did try to use this as a concealer brush, um, because I'm really terrible at washing my brushes and this actually works pretty well as a concealer brush. It's not going to let you pack on things the way that this kind of a brush will. Um, but it, it gives a really nice finish to concealer. It'll just very like lightly put it on and blend it out very beautifully. Um, so it's surprisingly good for that. I, I don't think that it's meant for that, but I've used it for that and it's been good. Um, I think I would struggle with it being my only concealer brush because it's just, it's very like, it's not stiff at all. It's very flowy. There, there's a beautiful softness to it and a lack of stiffness to it. So the way that I actually use this brush, aside from if I'm using it as concealer, is actually kind of as a crease brush in my eye. Um, you can use it as like just a lay down brush, but this, this is almost bigger than my lid space. So I don't love to use it that way because it can poke me in the eye just because my lid space isn't big enough. Um, it just kind of takes up the entire space. But there's something about the fluffiness of this brush that really lets it go into the crease of my hooded eye and blend things out in an incredibly precise way because it's not super fluffy to either side. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting brush and I really like it. I think it's very high quality. These bristles have never poked me in any way. 
Um, I think it's just a shape that I'm a little bit stumped with. And I don't really have anything else in my collection that's like it. The closest things that I have are this um, concealer brush from Sephora, the 45 brush. And this is just incredibly stiff. Um, it does, it's, it does have some movement and flow to it, but over time I've realized this is a totally different brush than the Ruffer 33, and I don't think that it's really fair to compare it to this brush. Um, there's just some very superficial things about both brushes that kind of go together. They kind of have a similar shape and they go to this kind of taper um, and I guess you can use both of them as concealer brushes but this is a lot stiffer and frankly I've I've I think I've only used this once um, and I I did not like it this is this is too stiff for me it pokes me it didn't give me the concealer lay down that I liked I didn't care for this brush now the only other brush that kind of compares to the Ruffer 33 is the Work for One brush that I have from Sonia G. Um, and it, please excuse all the sparkles. I, again, I'm terrible at washing my brushes. I use this brush much in the same way where um, I will use this as a wash of color on my lid because the brush head is a bit smaller than the 33. But because of the fluffiness of the brush, I will also use it in my crease to sort of blend things out a little bit. And it gives me this really um, controlled blend without making things really blown out. So I really like both of these brushes for that. That being said, I think that if I had better crease brushes, I wouldn't have a need for either one of these. So on to Really my only crease brush is the number 16. I'm just going to say this, this straight up. I love this brush. And if I get anything from the sale, it will probably be another one of these brushes and maybe some of the other refer crease brushes. I love this brush. Um, it's very soft. It's never poked me. It has a beautiful taper to it that even though it is quite fluffy and like quite like big, um, it, it doesn't have a lot of density in the end of the brush. So I can really fit this into um, like the hood of my lid and buff this back and forth. And this makes a really beautiful blending crease brush for me. And it's very comfortable, it's very soft, and it just, it puts my product exactly where I want it to go. And I really, really love this brush. So I'm going to stop gushing about it, but I really like it. Um, <laughs> my only, the only things that are really similar to it are, um, so I have another worker one that I put here to remind myself to talk about it, but really the only other brush that I have um, that's like it is the Blender Pro from Sonia G. And frankly, I really need to get Sonia G's Crease Pro uh, brush. And the only thing that keeps me from getting it is I've heard um, her Crease Pro Pro brush doesn't have the same lack of density in the tip that the Ruffer 16 does, and that's part of the reason I like it so much. And part of the reason I don't like the Blender Pro as much is because it actually has a lot of density at the tip, which gives you a lot of control, but if you're like me and you're trying to fit this in your hood and blend it around, it makes it too tight of a fit, and it makes it uncomfortable because of that. So this just has too much bristle for my hood. That's just how it is. And, and this is meant to be a blender brush anyway. This isn't really meant to be a crease brush per se. Um, so yeah, I really love this brush and I'd probably get another one. Now 23. 23 is another brush that I really love. And I think the only thing that I don't love about it is it is a little bit pokey. And I don't love that about it. I love how small it is though. I love how precise I can get. This is a great liner brush. It's a great brush for doing detail work. Um, Cause what I really like to do, especially with like my outer V is do detail work and then come in with a blender brush and like buff it out a little bit. Cause then that allows me to be very precise and make things not too large for my eyes and then kind of buff it out in order to get a really beautiful finish and make it not look too precise. Um, but I will say I don't love 
I don't know. I go back and forth on this because the tip of this really does have really nice movement to it. And I'm sorry, my camera keeps on going in and out. Um, it really does have nice movement to it, but if I put this on my under, like the lashes under my eyes, it is very, it, it can be pokey. It's not the pokiest brush I've ever used. Um, and it's not terrible. It's just something that I notice every time I use it. Um, that being said, none of my other brushes are as precise as this one. Like I have the pencil one. I also have the original pencil one from Sonia G that squirrel hair, but that, that is not precise. Um, I can't get quite as precise with this brush as I can with the 23. Like even though the tip comes to a very precise tip, it's not as precise. And that's just how it is. And then the Pencil Pro is even more of a blunt tip. So it, it's great for like an inner corner highlight and things like that, but it's not going to give you the level of detail that the 23 is going to give you. And I think my closest brush to the 23 is actually Sony G Smudger 1 and Smudger 2, which I cannot tell the difference between because this one just comes to such a precise tip. You see that? But because of the way that it's made, it has this flat edge too. Now, I really like my smudger brushes, and in a lot of cases, I will use them instead of the rougher 23. But here's the thing, is you can't get the smudger one or two brushes anymore either. They've been out of stock for a really long time. So, and I don't know if Sony G is bringing them back. So overall, this is a really good brush for the price. Um, but I do have other brushes that I prefer a lot more. Um, and there might be other brushes out there that might be better than this one. So just be aware of that. But again, if you don't have really sensitive eyes, it might not matter to you that much. So going on to the 34. This brush is amazing, and I don't have any other brush like it. I'm really happy I picked this up, and I've considered getting another one, but I don't think I use it quite often enough that I would need to. Now, I do have the Wayne Goss um, 8 brush. These are different, kind of in the way that the Refer 23 and the Sony G uh, Smudger 1 and 2 are. But these will both give you an incredibly precise line, and I like that about both of these. And I use these in a little bit of different ways. I think I still do prefer the Wayne Goss 8, simply because I have a flat edge to work with. So, final thoughts. Um, even though I enjoy my refer brushes, I don't plan on buying any more. I think that they were good starter brushes for me, especially since I didn't have any experience with having makeup brushes before and I had no idea what shapes or sizes I liked. Um, but now that I understand my preferences a little bit more and I realize just how sensitive my skin is, I prefer to save up for uh, higher quality brushes that are going to cost a little bit more, such as the Wayne Goss brushes or Sonia G brushes. Um, but I wouldn't discourage anyone from purchasing from Ruffer. Overall, I think the um, the quality of the brushes are good for their price point when they're on sale. Um, and I do think that they would be particularly good for someone who just wants that really nice finish that natural hair can give, but they don't want to pay usual food day prices. I think they are good for that. And overall, I think they make for a very good, um, like entry food day, if that makes sense. So overall, I think that they're good for their price, but I don't think that overall as a brand, um, they're high enough quality for my really sensitive skin. And overall, I think that they just don't make the shapes that I prefer. Um, cause honestly, my, my most used brushes are my Sony G face one, which is a flat top Kuki brush. Um, my Wayne Goss zero zero, which is this like giant fluffy brush with a super tapered tip. Um, and then my Sony G um, smudger brushes.
those are the brushes I use the most, and Ruffer just simply doesn't really have anything that looks like those or acts like those. Um, so I think overall the brand just doesn't have the brushes that I prefer, which is fine. Doesn't mean that they're bad, just means that they're not for me, um, which is kind of sad because their price point is nice. <laughs> Um, but overall, I think that if you're just getting into food day or you just want like a nice brush, they're fine. They're great. Um, I just don't plan on getting any more. So let me know below. Are you planning on picking up any brushes from the rougher sale? Are you waiting for something else? Or do you have your eyes on the new Wayne Goss release? Let me know. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope this was informative or entertaining. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.